Alaska came out a couple of months ago and it's quickly become one of my favorite survival games. The Dev San Sailor Studio have recently released, well recently it was yesterday, <laughs> their roadmap for the game because everyone's been asking for it. So let's have a quick look and see what's coming to Aska. This was tweeted yesterday and we've got, they're going to be, there's planned four updates for the rest of 2024, which is pretty cool. It's always good to see a game constantly getting reworked. I'm listening to the fan feedback and stuff like that. So August, I mean, we're on the 21st of August, so this must be coming very soon. We have a custom world gen, which says we're putting you in control. There's a stylist, so you can change your appearance anytime you want. Outhouse and composting, our villagers can go for a poo. Metal parts salvage, terrain adaptable walls, and spiked barricade wall add-ons. So let's have a quick look at this. Features in development, which may come um, as part of these guys, is seafaring and rates, dedicated server multiplayer, that'd be a good one. Theme deck version, shield painting, customize, you know, your army and stuff. A cooking house upgrade, a road planner, Ragnar bear form, cave makeover, that could be interesting, party mechanic, arm militia, elite enemies, Oof, sometimes I find some of the combat tough, combat upgrade, terraform and sloped fields, and upgrade as water skins. And I mean, that won't be everything because it's got a feature list reflects active development priorities, but not release order will keep you informed. So there are things that are coming. That's fine. But let's just concentrate on what's first coming in August. Now, if I go on the Steam page, they talk about it in more detail. Vikings, we know you've been hotly anticipating our roadmap and to see the direction of the game. And we're thrilled to share an overview of our first major updates to ask it in the months to come. To be clear, these aren't the only updates to the game, just the first few ones we want to share with you at this time. Should we dig into the good stuff then? Update 1 is something you shouted from the rooftops and we want to know you, we heard you. So this is good. The reacting to fan feedback. Should say player feedback rather than fan feedback. You'll be able to customize many different facets of the game, including enemies, gather rates, events, day night length and more. We hope this will satisfy those of you looking for a peaceful building experience and also those of you looking for an even harder survival challenge. So basically, they're bringing custom games in, which is great because currently at the minute, you just log on and you play. And a lot of people, they like to tailor the experience. For some people, the game may be too difficult. Let me know if you find it too difficult. For some people, you may find it's too easy. It's too, there's not much to do. There's not enough challenge for you. So the ability to actually craft and tailor the game and experience to your particular needs is surely a welcome addition to the game. In this update, we will also be including a couple of new buildings, but you'll have to tune into the patch notes for that. And the patch notes will be, you know, like, it'll show up on Steam. And then they talk about updates 2, 3 and 4 will be spread out throughout the rest of 2024 will include a variety of buildings, upgrades, system overhauls and new systems. We're still cooking, so we can't give you an ex exhaustive list of what will be ready for each update yet. You can look forward to things like new enemies, gathering a raiding party and setting sail, as well as more fun additions to make your villagers feel more alive. Later in the year, we will look to launch what we are dubbing our multiplayer update, where we will look to launch dedicated servers for you all. We're also adding an in-game chat system so you can communicate with other players online and create hobbies. So currently you can play it if you host the game. So I've played it with Plant Mix Gaming and stuff, but having an actual multiplayer lobby could be really cool, like a server, because sometimes you want to jump on, do a bit, jump off. You may not be around when the other person or your other party are available. So that gives you more freedom as well. One of the most consistent feedback themes we receive from the community concerns AI, especially villager AI. We're constantly working to make villager behavior understandable and consistent and to give you more ways to engage with them. Our long term goal is to reduce micromanagement and make villager behavior and intent as transparent as possible. Although they sometimes might seem irrational, our villagers brains are actually quite complex and they're doing their best to stay off your back as much as possible and do their jobs as best as they are able. 
but that's no easy task with all they have going on. They know when to eat and what to eat. They must sometimes defy their schedule to make sure the job gets done. They must pick out equipment and get dressed, drop off materials, plan their routes when setting off to gather a variety of resources and try not to get killed in the process. I have lost so many <laughs> and they go off and then it just pops up. They've been spooked and the next minute they're dead. They must sometimes engage enemies and sometimes not and so many other thoughts. Our objective is to give you not robots which you have to program yourself but lively characters that are obviously doing their best to assist you and see your designs come to completion. Asker has grown a lot in the last year and we're in the process of continuing to build on this by reworking key villager jobs like the warehouse and workshop workers. We're always listening and continue to appreciate your feedback and we finesse this to final quality. To wrap this up, we'd like to advise this also isn't an exhaustive list. Other things might pop up or slip in too as we keep working, but we hope this gives you all the reassurance that we have been and are continuing to work hard on building on the world of Asker and delivering updates when we feel they are best ready to be released. We can't wait to hear what you think, so please do leave us some feedback in the forums, in Discord, on our social media, YouTube. <laughs> We are listening and we want to ensure we deliver our version for the game while taking into consideration any major changes our player base are advocating for when we feel it's appropriate. Apparently, if you're reading all of this and you haven't had the chance to explore the world of Asker, we're thrilled to say you can pick it right up now in the Gamescom sale for 20%. It's amazing. Get the game. If it's 20% off and you're looking for a quick game, you know, it's normally 20 quid, I think. So yeah, defo, I would suggest this game. So this, I mean, in that Steam, they just talk about the custom world, but you've got these other parts. With the stylist, currently in the game, you can only really pick certain presets uh, for Ragnar or for Asuka. So I'm wondering, will the stylist actually give you more scope? Will it introduce more elements that you can put in? Are they going to add things like dye so you can dye your skin or give yourself new tattoos? That'd be quite cool. Maybe scatter some tattoos around the place to find. Outhouse and composting. The thing with composting is, and then if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. The only way I know to get spoiled food for compost is to just leave it lying around on the floor. Then I have to go pick it up and then give it to me farmer who will then do the crops. So having a specific place for this where we can put like stuff to spoil and the villagers can go and poo and you know and your character can go poop what if they'll give you an xp boost for pooing like arch does <laughs> but yeah that that's a great addition as well because to be honest the farms are quite important because winter can be really tough in the game metal parts salvage i'm wondering about this because you can find when you kill the mobs that attack you particularly on the blood moon uh you sometimes pick up things like you know their weapons but there's no repair in the game once something is smashed it, it can no longer be used but that might be good say for example you get a large axe and you're able to salvage it where you can recoup the actual head the axe head you know rather than making it so that'd be pretty good or yeah just break it down for parts even if you just you can break it down and then say okay so i've got some metal scrap or something now i can forge you um, and make a new weapon i like that just for anything though to be honest because sometimes as you level up you're gonna have certain weapons you no longer need anymore so the ability to salvage them would be good terrain adaptable walls is key that's a great one that because the land isn't flat it's not supposed to be flat and the fact that the wall will rise up and you can really get the sense of a village when you have the terrain adaptable wall so that's a pretty good one i like that spiked barricade wall add-ons that's a defensive measure that will be helpful as well but yeah i mean as they say it's a living document that will keep evolving it looks good it's good to see devs constantly thinking about the game looking at player interaction looking at player feedback and not losing their own vision but you know tailoring that feedback into their vision and i hope that's what Sans San Sailor Studio can do with Asuka. So let me know, are you looking forward to the update? Are you still playing Asuka? It's a great game. It really is. I'm up to day 100. I haven't done any of the bosses yet because I am crap at fighting. 